What do you guys think of those tables? Solid, easy to use, easy to get up and down. Yeah, they're awesome, awesome, awesome. Where'd that Izzy guy go? <laughs> I'm back. Those three tables that I, you just watched that short clip of are the some of the builds I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. I've been working on those and making sure I have plans ready for them. Today we're going to talk about table number two, but two. <laughs> Today we're talking about table number two. Now, all three of those tables are going to be coming up in detailed videos with plans, so that's all going to be happening here this week. Uh, but the first table is table number two. Just a quick rundown. The first table that you saw in that sequence was a kid's table. It's designed to be used for children. Now, it folds up into a footprint that is 18 by 18 inches. It has a 36-inch high top when it's folded up, so it can be set on the side and used as a you know an end table, put a plant on, put a radio on it out on a porch or something. The second table, the one that we're going to be looking at today, is designed to be more of a patio style table. It can be folded up and then it's got a larger uh, top. It has a little bit larger footprint. The base footprint is 20 by 20, a little bigger than that. And the uh, top is big enough that you can put a couple bar stools on either side of it, have a nice romantic evening with your special someone. When company comes over, it unfolds, you have more seating. The third one is the most compact one, and I think the coolest one, and that one is designed to be mobile. It weighs just under 60, or just under 70 pounds. You can move it around, take it with you, and um, I'm going to show you some more stuff on that in another upcoming video. But today we're talking about table number, number two, so let's get started. What makes all these tables work is the unique way that the top folds up. And it's really quite simple. The centerpiece is just evenly set back from the edge of the table all the way around. And then each table has four wings. And the wings fold out. The centerpieces here have a side piece that's hinged by a wood, that's got a wood hinge right here. And I just cut this wood, hit wooden hinge out on the uh, bandsaw and then use my drill press to drill in a pin on both sides. Once that was done, I screwed the center top down. Uh, actually, I put the screws behind these hinges so that would be hidden and then fastened everything on it. Now, the one thing that I was, was a little bit, not really tricky, but the side of the uh, piano hinge needs to be basically flush with the side of the tabletop. So when it folds up, this the top of this wing is base, is in line with the side of that tabletop, and that makes sure there's plenty of room for those seats to come up and fold into it. So just like the wings on the top, the, the tabletop, the chair arm and the legs are also hinged using a wooden hinge and a you know a wooden pin. And the reason I did that is to cut down on costs. And quite frankly, to buy high quality hinges that don't have movement or a lot of play in them gets pretty expensive. And if you were to add the second hinge to the tabletop, a hinge here and a hinge here, that's three hinges per side. You're talking 12 hinges. And at four or five bucks a piece, that can get a little bit pricey. The way this is designed, you can build the whole thing provided you buy the material from like the box store or don't have a cheaper supplier for just a little over $60. That includes the screws, the glue, the hardware, everything. It doesn't include a finish, which I hadn't put on this. So if you wanted to add a finish to it, that would be a little extra. Now the plans that I made for this are very specific. They lay everything out on two by 12s, as opposed to like two, one, or two by sixes, two by fours. And the reason I did that is because it's cheaper. You can buy one two by 12 for, the, for less than you can buy three two by fours. And typically, out of the 2x12 stock, you're going to get a higher quality material, there's going to be less knots, and it's going to be straighter grain. And the reason why is because the 2x12s most often come from larger trees or older growth trees. So you're going to end up with a little bit better quality wood and a little bit denser wood. So that's why I chose 2x12s as opposed to you know, buying all the different se separate sizes and just cutting it down on the table saw. So the construction on this is really simple. It's all pocket hole joinery. An important thing to remember when you're building this is whenever you have a hinge position like this, there's a three quarter inch round over so it can close. So that material is removed so whichever direction that it hinge is closing has that material removed. Now I left it on the bottom and that kind of gives it a bit of a positive stop and that seemed to work well. And the same on the top. If you look at the top here, you'll see that where the direction that the hinge closes you're going to see a three-quarter roundover, three-quarter roundover, and three-quarter of a roundover there in the back, so this thing closes. And then I left the material on the bottom, so it kind of gives it that positive stop. And each side is exactly the same. 
If you look here, you can see that through this side right here, I've just got some screws running into this uh, second frame over here. So it's just a butt lap joint, and then it's screwed in. You can glue it if you want to, but if you're using it for outdoor purposes, make sure that you're using Type Bond 2 as opposed to regular Elmer's wood glue or whatever. Now the construction process on this is really quite simple. It's a simple frame. Everything on here is bent to be simple. The really only tricky parts are the hinge positions and then assembling it. You know, for instance, when I put this together, I installed the chair arm first. I lifted it up and I installed the seat to it. And when that was done, I installed the leg. And then after that, I installed each of these braces. Now these braces weren't on the plans or aren't on the plans. And I'll add them to them in the add-on section of the plans. So, uh, and the reason are really, are really important because if something happens and you let this drop, uh, this is probably going to break because it sticks out a good six inches. So it's important to add these braces on. Uh, again, that was an afterthought, so that'll be on the add-on section on the plans. Now, each set of plans is laid out with a materials list, a cut list, a layout, and a very detailed step-by-step um, -step guide on making the parts. So while I was designing these tables, there were three things I was keeping in mind. First of all, it's cost. I wanted to keep the cost down. Second of all is making it as simple as possible to build. And the third thing I really wanted to focus on was keeping it unique. So it's unique that there's nothing else out there like it, which makes it a very sellable item. So if you wanted to make a little extra money, building these in the garage and selling them on the side is definitely, I think, a viable thing that some people could make a little extra money on. And please do so. If you're interested in the plans, they are available in the description box below and they're also available on my website. And, you know, if, you, if you're one of those people that uh, decide that you're going to get the plans, let me know what you think of them. I've set this up in an entirely new way, spent a lot of time in the last couple of weeks learning new ways to make uh, plans, put plans together to make them very easy and understandable. So I'd love to get some feedback from those of you who decide that you want to go ahead and get the plans. Anyway, thanks for watching. In the next couple of days or throughout the week here, I'll be posting videos on the triangle table. That's the kids' table. And also on the... Um, <laughs> you know, the table that folds up into a little box? <laughs> That'll be up later this week as well. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to bringing you more fun builds. We're getting back to business. You'll start seeing builds, build videos from me again every week, more, probably more than one. Also, if you want a little bit more information about what's going on behind the scenes, you can check out my Facebook page. Links in the description box below. You can also check out my vlog videos. Also, links in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and we'll be talking to you real soon.